Okay, uh, we'll go ahead and get started. A good afternoon and, and welcome to all of you to the Iowa City Foreign Relations Council's program featuring guest speakers Sadat Ahmadi and Zainab Afka. Uh, thanks to them and to all of you who have joined us online today. I am Peter Gerlach, ICFRC's Executive Director and your host for today. ICFRC wants to acknowledge and thank its annual donors, members, and sponsors for their support. This list includes the Iowa Arts Council through the Iowa Department of Cultural Affairs, Humanities Iowa and the National Endowment for the Humanities, the University of Iowa's International Programs, Honors Program and Public Policy Center, the Stanley UI Foundation Support Organization, Midwest One Bank, Taxes Plus, and City Channel 4 for providing online access to ICFRC's program along with the UI Library Archives. ICFRC has adopted the Native American Land Acknowledgement prepared for the City of Iowa City's Ad Hoc Truth and Reconciliation Commission and Human Rights Commission. ICFRC recognizes that our home community of Iowa City now occupies the homelands of Native American nations to whom we owe our commitment and our dedication. The full text of ICFRC's acknowledgement is on our website, ICFRC. Dot org. As we get started, I'd like to cover some Zoom etiquette tips. This is the time to make sure you know where your video and audio mute and unmute buttons are located. You are already muted, so we ask that you keep your audio turned off for the duration of the presentation so that you do not interrupt the speakers. Uh, if you do want to keep your video turned on, that's great, uh, but we ask that you do your best not to use any distracting movements or behaviors. Following our speaker's presentation at about 12.45, uh, we'll have a 15-minute Q&A. You'll be able to submit your questions via the chat function. At that time, if you, you have not done so, we invite you to turn your video on, but please keep your audio and mute your audio muted to avoid any background during that Q&A. So I would now like to introduce our two speakers, uh, Sadat Ahmadi and Zainab Afghan. Sadat Ahmadi is an interpreter and resource navigator at the Catholic Charities Archdiocese of Dubuque in Cedar Rapids helping fellow resettled Afghans with language barriers and introducing them to available resources in the community. Sadat was born and raised in Afghanistan and after graduating from high school, joined Afghan Air Force and has a diploma from the Afghan Air Force University and was a Lieutenant and helicopter pilot for the Afghan Air Force. Sadat had his flight school and flights in the Republic of Slovakia in H269 and MD530 helicopters and in, 20, in October of 2021, after the fall of the Afghan government, Sadat was evacuated from the Republic of Slovakia to the United States and was granted parole status under the Operation Allies Refuge Program. And in the winter of 2021, he was resettled to Cedar Rapids, Iowa, where he continues to live. Sadat always had a passion for helping and assisting people, and this inspired him to start working at Catholic Charities in Cedar Rapids. Sadat is now a part of the Immigration Legal Services team of Catholic Charities in Cedar Rapids, helping Afghans with their different immigration matters and helping them seek lawful permanent residency in the United States. Zainab Afghan is the Afghan Program Specialist at YPN in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. She and her family came to the United States in August of 2021 after the fall of Afghanistan. Her family's life in the US started in Wisconsin, but after a long journey, they finally settled in Cedar Rapids in February of 2022. Shortly after Zainab started her first job at YPN in March, she assists families in their transition to life in the US, connects them to resources in the community, interprets for home visits and group classes, and works as a support for Afghan mothers navigating parenting in the US. She has also collaborated with the Catherine McCauley Center as they provide many classes and support for the Afghan community. 
Zainab graduated high school in Afghanistan and wants to go to school in the US to become a doctor. She hopes to return to Afghanistan after she has completed her education so she can continue to serve those in need. Please join me in welcoming Sadat Ahmadi and Zainab Afghan, who will talk about Cedar Rapids, Afghan community, 18 months on. And we'll begin our remarks with Sadat. Uh, Sadat, uh, the floor is yours. And if you want to share your slides too, uh, you can go ahead. Yes, so hello everyone and good noon. My name is Sadat Ahmadi and I'm an interpreter and resource navigator with Catholic Charities of Archdiocese of Dubuque here in our Cedar Rapids office. So in today's slides or in today's presentation, the, I will cover the following subjects. In the beginning, I will be providing a short history of Afghanistan and culture in Afghanistan and how Afghan culture looks and how important is culture for Afghan. And then how actually Afghans ended up in the US and why they fear going back to their homeland country and the demographics of Afghan arrivals. And then, yeah, how did they feel about their first winter in Iowa? And then how Afghans are dealing with employment in Iowa or in Cedar Rapids? What are the challenges and their current employers experience? with the new Afghan employees. And then how Afghans are dealing with immigration and visa matters and who helps them with this important matters in Cedar Rapids or in Eastern Iowa. Uh, because in this, this is the most important matter for the Afghan population in Cedar Rapids or Afghans all around in the US becoming lawful part Permanent resident provides a legal pathway for Afghans to reunite with their family members, their spouses, and children uh, who were left behind in Afghanistan, added as it was not possible for most of Afghan arrivals to bring their family members, their spouses, or children to the US because of the chaos in the country and and the airport during the evacuation. And then I will be covering the, the current legal immigration status and a brief overview of the legal options and becoming lawful permanent residents in the US. So from this slide on, I will just, uh, I will provide a short history about Afghanistan. So Afghanistan is a landlocked country which is located in Central Asia and is a neighbor with Iran to the west and Pakistan to the east and Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan and a small part of the north is connected to China. Tall mountains and dry deserts cover most of the landscape of Afghanistan. The High mountain peaks are snow covered for most of the year. The country has more than 5,000 years of history and had different names throughout the history. Summers are hot and dry, but winters are very cold, especially north of the Hindu Kush, which is located in the eastern part of the country uh, near Pakistan and Tajikistan. The mountains passes in Afghanistan allowed travelers passage across Asia. The country was a busy section of Silk Road and a route that merchants traveled over, over the land between China, India, and Europe for over 2,000 years. Uh, there are currently 14 nationally recognized ethnic groups in Afghanistan and 60 tribes. Pashtuns are the first largest ethnic group with 40% and Tajiks are the second largest, <clears throat> largest ethnic groups with a percentage of 30. And other ethnic groups such as Uzbeks, Turkmans, Hazaras, and more. And more than 30 languages 
are spoken in Afghanistan. Uh, but the main languages are Dari and Pashto, which is spoken all around the country. And everyone knows and understands these two languages in Afghanistan. So this is part I will provide some information about the culture of Afghanistan. So Afghans are very proud of their land, religion, and ancestry. The, they value their independence, point life. The particular trade-off is the, the result of consistent foreign invasion. Uh, Islam religion is followed almost by all Afghans and it dominates much of their personal, political, economic, and legal lives. And hospi hospitality and harm are two characteristics of all Afghans. Uh, Afghanistan has lost quite a few of its historic monuments and decent wars. If, if I provide an example, the 154 feet tall Buddhas of Bamiyan which was created in a cliff of mountain, mountains in about six centuries. Uh, how Afghans greet each other with a phrase, Assalamu Alaikum, which means peace be with you, and a handshake and sometimes hacks are most common for greeting someone. Another way is to place your hand over your heart for, especially for greeting a woman. Handshakes are not common with Afghan women. If you ever see an Afghan woman and if you offer her a handshake and if she refuses to shake hands with you, this is not an, uh, this is not being impolite of her, but rather a cultural thing. And two, in 2001, shortly after the 9-11 attack, U.S. invaded Afghanistan for the purpose of destroying terrorist safe havens. And with the help of Afghan local men, an end was put to, to the first regime of the Taliban. And shortly at the same year, a republic and shortly at the same year, a republic government was announced in Afghanistan and security forces was built up. And two, in 2000, from 2001 to 2021, US military and Afghan forces worked together shoulder to shoulder in the same office conducting joint missions against Taliban and other terrorist groups. So the war lasted for 20 years in Afghanistan, and it caused the life of thousands of Af innocent Afghan men, women, children, and Afghan military personnel. Oh, oh, and to 2021, when Taliban took over Afghanistan once again, life became risky for most of Afghans, especially for Afghans who were employed by or on behalf of the US government, or for Afghans uh, who was part of the security forces of Afghanistan. And they were evacuated by the US government to the US because they had their life was in danger and they were likely to be prosecuted by the Taliban. Upon arrivals and the US Afghans were granted parole status under the Operation Allies Refuge Program. And Afga most of Afghans spent months and months and some of the military bases inside the US until they were resettled around the US by different local resettlement agencies. As an example, Afghans and Rapids was resettled by Catherine Nicoli Center and were assisted in finding housing and employment. Currently, there are 2,500, uh, currently, there, sorry, currently, there are 250 plus Afghans living in Cedar Rapids area. Most of the arrivals are 
single men who left their immediate family members in Afghanistan. Among the 250 Afghan arrivals, there are about 25 to 30 families living in Sidrapa. Uh, Afghan and Sidrapa were able to find employment and mostly, and mostly are employed and working. The main companies that Afghans and Sidrapas are employed by are Whirlpool, which is located in Amana, Iowa, Iowa Premium, or National Beef, which is located in Tema, and West Liberty Food, which is located in West Liberty. But a minority of Afghan community were able to find employment in Cedar Rapids and does not have to drive far to get to work. And now, if you ask me, whether they are happy with their employment or not. My answer as a community member who socially meets them, meet them would be no, because the jobs or the works they perform are not what sets their skill set. Uh, some of the individuals have some specific and unique skill which they acquired during their employment in Afghanistan. And then the and employments they have now is not uh, skill set employment for them, but they have been able to adjust somehow because they had no choice but to adjust. Language has always been a barrier at finding their favorable jobs and jobs that really sets their skill set. Most of Afghans and Sidrapas, they are trying hard to learn English in order to be, in, in order to be able to work at the place that they want to work in a place that sets their skill set. Uh, employers have had a good experience with their new Afghan employees, and they describe them as hardworking, flexible to adjust to work, and individuals with good skills. Uh, Catholic Charities involvement with the Afghan population. Catholic Charities of the Archdiocese of Dubuque is a non-profit organization that serves refugees and immigrant communities in Eastern Iowa. When Afghans arrived in Sidrapids and last year, at the beginnings of 2022, Catholic Charities Immigration Legal Services team decided to meet with the Afghan community and offered help with the legal immigration matters by hosting multiple legal workshops and community meetings to let them, the community know of the importance of their legal immigration status and initial screenings of their possible legal options in the future. Uh, currently, Catholic Charities Legal Immigration Services team has five attorneys, two attorneys, three, three attorneys and civil rapids, one attorney and Waterloo office, and one attorney and a Dubuque's office, as well as three bilingual legal assistants. Because the language is a barrier and this a specific community, Catholic Charities also provides interpretation and translation services to better serve this community. And besides the immigration legal services, Afghans are also being assisted with short-term case management and navigation and introduction to other resources in the community. Afghans were granted parole status under the operational Operation Airless Refuge Program and when they came to the U.S. And their parole status is only valid for two years from the time from the time of their arrival. In order for Afghans to become lawful permanent residents, they would have to seek other legal pathways and becoming lawful permanent, permanent residents. Uh, so currently there are two legal pathways for Afghans to become lawful permanent residents. In order to become a lawful permanent resident, Afghans would have to either apply for a special immigration visa or asylum based on their eligibility requirement. 
uh, certain Afghans can apply for a special immigration visa, and this is a fast pathway for Afghans who are employed by or on behalf of the U.S. military as interpreters, translators, or security forces. And it does not cover the individuals who work with Afghan security forces. And for Afghans who did not work for the U.S. forces but fear returning, returning back can apply for asylum. As an example, Afghan military forces or Afghan security forces who were not employed by the U.S. government, but they fear going back to the country so they can apply for asylum to become a local permanent resident in the future. So who, who, who qualifies for a special immigrant visa or who is eligible for that? A person who worked for any of the following in Afghanistan for at least 12 months. A person who worked with the with US, either with US government or with US military, or they worked with you any program or project which was funded by the US government or any non-organization, non-government organization, non-profits, which was focused on the humanitarian or environmental. <laughs> And the, the second part of our evidence who were not employed by the US government as asylum and now who qualifies for asylum people who have suffered either in the past or are likely to suffer prosecution in the future based on their based on these five grounds, their race, religion, nationality, political opinion, or membership in a particular social group. In addition to that, they have they would have to show that the prosecution is either by the government or by someone who the government either cannot or is not willing to stop. And Maulana Jalaldin Muhammad Balkhi, also known as Lumi, he was actually from Afghanistan and he was one of the greatest Afghan poets in Afghan history. And he once said, you are not just a drop in the ocean, you are the entire drop. You are the entire ocean and a drop. So that uh, ends the slides I plan to cover. So from here on, I will turn it to sign up to cover some other challenges and experiences that Afghans have in the sea rapids. So sign up. Hello, everyone. Have a good noon. Thank you, Sadat, for covering important points and sharing the Afghan history with us. I will I will give you information about like how we're doing Afghan people in Cedar Rapids. Main supporter, main supporter will Uh, Zainab, uh, you're you're muted. Um, would you uh, turn your microphone back on? Uh, Zainab, can you can you hear me? We can't hear you because your microphone is off.
Okay, you're back. You're back. Okay. You want to share your slides again, and then, um, yeah. Oh, you're muted. You're muted again, uh, Zainab. You want to unhit your your mute on the bottom left corner. Okay. When I'm sharing my slide. Can you hear us right now? Okay. And then. When I'm sharing my slide on screen, let us mute. I don't know why. It mutes when you share your screen. Mm -hmm. you're share it looks like you're sharing right now, though. Okay. And he's nodding, so that's good. <laughs> yep. it, it sounds like you're all set to go now. Yeah. You can, if you want to start with your first slide, then you, you should be good. Okay, I'll, hello everyone, have okay. a good one. Yep. And thank you Sadat for covering important points and sharing Afghan history. And I will share how are Afghan people doing here in Cedar Rapids. Like main supporter, main supporter is um, the World Kadri Macaulay Center, which we can call CMC, YPN, and Kadri Charities. Main supporter was like one of the like CMC, CMC, um, he, CMC help with the, uh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? CMC help with employment, finding, finding jobs and housing starting a contract with Wildpool and other company to help provide employment opportunities and found housing for families and enroll to ch children in school and offered English classes, offered English classes uh, for free and provided pregnancy and childcare education for Afghan women and seems also paid for water, electricity, rent and other bills and CMC also assisted families in applying for benefit like SNAP and FIP. And I want to turn to YPN. YPN start a program for Afghan mothers and children to attend group uh, parenting classes. And YPN also provide parenting and pregnancy education. And YPN educate family differences between living in Afghanistan with living US like human trafficking, schooling, traffic lights, car safety, carbon monoxide, smoking detrick, birth control in libraries. And Zainab, you're uh, you're muted again. Um, I think you're on your next slide too. You want to unmute yourself and move to the next slide? Thanks for being patient, everybody. <laughs> I don't know, I I don't know why it's not showing it. That's weird. Yeah. Can you click on the bottom there on the 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 slideshow feature? Mm -hmm. There. Yep. There we go.
Sorry, Zainab, you're muted again for some reason. Okay, I'll try. Can you see my slide now? Yes. I don't know what happened. <laughs> you're fine, keep going, you're doing great. And wiping also provide clothes, diaper wipes and other stuff as they needed. And as we know, uh, a lot of women just stay at home, like just in like Afghanistan and wiping give women the opportunity to make friends and get out of the house with their children. And we have also home visits with uh, a parent educator for like focusing on child development and activities and over support. And Catholic charities help Afghan establish permanent resident and visa matters. That's a that talk about it. And they also help pay for medical and they also collaborated with wiping and CMC to serve Afghan community in housing. When first coming to Cedar Rapids, all families stayed in hotel for two or three months and uh, um, for CMC help families to find house and most of them family or house close together which CMC helped with. And CMC also helped with uh, pay for bills, rent and other stuff. Employment, most women stay at home to, uh, to take care of children just like in Afghanistan and a few of them is working but it mostly men. Some women are going to English classes and CMC also contract with Whirlpool and other similar companies has made it easier for the men to find a work like CMC did a lot of help with uh, Afghan refugees and childcare. Most families do not need childcare because the mothers stay at home with their children. If a mother does need childcare, they will have other Afghan moms take care of their children while they're working. Like we have some women now, uh, they need childcare and some other uh, Afghan moms, they are helping with uh, like taking care of their uh, children. And cultural differences. In Afghanistan, girls do not always get to go to school, not in Kabul, which is the capital, but in some provinces. And women are able to drive here, but not in Afghanistan. They can in Afghanistan, but a few. And so they have been working to get their permits and license. And our food and clothes are very different than us. And we have uh, two languages that we are um, almost similar, but we have also some differences. And Cedar Rapids and neighbor. Most Cedar Rapids neighbor are very nice and helpful for their um, Afghan neighbor, um, neighbors. And if they need help with uh, transportation or uh, taking children to school or some paperwork, they're helping with uh, the refugee or new neighbor. And how people are doing in Iowa, Afghan, um, Afghan um, main. They are working and taking English class at Corcord and also they're working in some of them are happy here in Iowa, but some would you like to move to other states and women as I said in the beginning, a lot of women, most of them stay at home to take care of children and a few, a few of them is working at Whirlpool. And some of them, they have also classes at Corcord and CMC. And the women are happy, they're able to make a connection at YPN, are excited to classes and earn education. Like, as I said at the beginning, they're just stay at home and when they, coming at group, they are so excited for uh, make connection and get education. Mm, language where major language is a uh, most, uh, like the biggest uh, problem and here for everyone, like for men, women, children, uh, for all of them. And, and the first was of course, uh, like for children in school. Now in the last six months, school has gotten a lot of easier for the children and children have been able to make friends from other countries like uh, Africa, India, Spanish speaking country, and uh, etc. And uh, children going to school has helped the, the children, children learn English and other important school subjects. And challenge, last, uh, my last title is challenge and joys. Challenge is uh, like, a, as I said in beginning language, Language is the biggest problem. In journey uh, from 
coming from Afghanistan and not having a permanent home for a long period of time and learning the loss, like we have really differences here than Afghanistan. That was the biggest challenge in her other paperwork or her uh, insurance. Join Joyce, who been making friends through group at YPN, like they stay at home sometime when they make connection at YPN, they're really happy and excited. But uh, they're also coming with their children and uh, we all provided a childcare for them. And being able to send money back home to family in Afghanistan and children can speak very good English and they're mostly the parents are so excited because their children is uh, uh, getting an education with English. Men are making money and want to start their own businesses and uh, women also learning, uh, some women of they want uh, like how to drive and uh, families feel safe here. And the last one, religion, religion is their own choice, not the government choice. Okay, if you have any question, let me know. Uh, yeah, that concludes your slides. Uh, that's that's great. Uh, okay, we have a, a good bit of time uh, for our Q and A session. Zainab, do you want to take your uh, slides down? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so we now move to the question and answer portion of our program. Uh, please submit your questions via the chat function at the bottom of your viewing screen. If you have not done so already, feel free to turn your uh, your video function on, but please keep yourself muted. While we're waiting for questions to come in, ICFRC wants to thank its members and donors for their support. If you would like to join ICFRC or make a gift to support its programs, please go to icfrc.org. Thank you. Um, yes, thank you so much, uh, Zainab and Sadat. Uh, I really appreciate uh, everything that you shared with us. And you bring such a you know a valuable perspective, uh, being that you are are both uh, Afghan yourselves. I wonder, uh, as the questions begin to come in, uh, I have one uh, for you to maybe start, and it's uh, maybe uh, either one of you or both of you. Um, I'm wondering if you can sort of take us into the community. Um, will you share with us some of the people that you've been working with that you've been supporting? Uh, you know, which uh, individuals, you know, sort of stand out to you the most? Um, have you had some memorable experiences with individuals that you can, you can share with us about uh, how they're doing uh, in Cedar Rapids? Yeah, so most of the individuals or most of the Afghan community and Cedar Rapids, as I mentioned before, so the most important thing for them is their immigration started this. We have seen our Afghan clients in the office that they received their green cards and became lawful permanent residents. And they were so happy and the joy on their face when you see that it just gives a different feeling. And they are doing good with employment as well. So most of some of the Afghans they they they, they were able to find the jobs that they like to find it, but for some of them, that's a challenge and language has always been a barrier on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Zainab, how about you? Are there particular individuals that you've supported or worked with, women and children, uh, that you can tell us about? Maybe tell us a little more about their stories? Yes, we are helping with the, them, like what is the differences here in, here in Afghanistan in, um, like there's a lot of differences in Afghanistan and what is the law, what is different between law. It's important to know and we have a group every Thursday night at Corkwood and they are coming here to Corkwood with their children and they make connection, making friends and earn education. And we're giving like we have a new, a new lesson for them every uh, Thursday. And uh, they're excited for that. And we have some like gift cards for them every Thursday night and uh, they can come here to week here and uh, anything they want we have here like for children diapers, wipes, uh, clothes, uh, anything they need like formula, we can help uh, with them with that. And we have home visit also with a few of women like they need uh, to find a childcare, they need to enroll their uh, children we can help uh, and we are already help with that with them. And also anytime if they need in like uh, 
a lot of uh, women they going to their appointments if they don't have uh, interpreter there every time calling me and i'm helping with them with that and uh, yes we can help with uh, like uh, as they need it and they can call me every time Wonderful. It sounds like uh, both uh, Catholic Charities and, and YPN have been uh, tremendous supports to the Afghan community in Cedar Rapids. Uh, one of our questions uh, uh, comes from an attendee asking, what type of support can we as fellow Iowans uh, provide to you and the Afghan community? And you've already talked a lot about what your organizations do. Uh, what can people here in the room today, how, how can they be supportive of the Afghan community there? A question for, for either one or, or maybe both of you, I guess. <laughs> Zainab, can I start with you? Uh, what, what types of support can, uh, can people who are watching the program right now, can they provide uh, the community? Are there ways that they can be supportive? Yes, like uh, a few women is here, they want like learn how to drive in uh, uh, they need like someone will uh, teach them how to drive. They need with that, and uh, they need some like uh, classes. And we have already in CMC, but they need some classes to learn more education. And the most thing is they want to how to drive. A lot of women they want to how to drive. They need that if like uh, someone helping with that. And I will turn to Sadat. Yeah. So from my perspective. Most of the Afghans that were settled in Iowa, they don't speak English or they are not familiar with the other resources and the community. Uh, they don't know where to go to seek help. And if someone wants to help Afghans, they can guide them uh, to they can guide them to the resources and the community or helping them joining English classes or uh, guiding them and navigating them to the resources, that would be good. I guess as a kind of follow-up to that, I'm wondering, um, and folks, uh, other websites, uh, maybe that you could share that people could uh, become a volunteer uh, to help with some of the things you're describing or could make a financial contribution to some of the organizations, Catholic Charities, YPN, maybe the Catherine McCulley Center. Um, I wonder if you know we can share some uh, some websites uh, to folks so that they can learn uh, direct ways to to get in touch with people to help. Uh, would that be possible to share those? So that would that be possible? Yes, yes, we can share those. Fabulous. Okay, yeah, that would be great uh, if you could share those. Um, another question uh, comes in. Um, you mentioned some interest in moving to other states. Are there states in the U.S. that are popular to Afghans? Uh, what makes other states attractive? Yes, so the, I would say the, uh, the Afghans, most of the Afghans are rivals where they settled either in Texas and New York, California, and these states because they had have, they have some relatives before uh, and these states. So most of the Afghans in the largest Afghan communities are in Cedar Rapids, Chicago, uh, uh, sorry, and California, and Texas, and Chicago, and in New York. These states, these are the states that have the, the largest Afghan community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so finding more support amongst uh, fellow Afghans in a larger community might be nice. You mentioned 250 people in, in Cedar Rapids. Um, it, yeah, your, your point uh, makes good sense uh, that people would wanna be, you know, in a larger, in a larger community perhaps. Uh, I, I wonder the same question to you, uh, Zainab. Uh, what are you hearing amongst uh, the, the women that you support? Uh, is there interest among them to um, to resettle more permanently in other states in the United States? Yes, they are also they like um, to move to other states because there's like a lot of people. They're from Afghanistan and they have relatives. And uh, like um, here's the people they want to find like Afghani clothes, but they cannot find here. And 
in California, they can find like as they want, as they needed, everything like force, clothes, everything, and they have relatives there. That's why they want to move there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes sense. Um, so Dot, maybe this is a question for you. How is the process of finding a legal pathway to citizenship working out? Uh, you noted that there is a two-year uh, timeline, correct? Um, so, you know, if folks came here in, uh, in summer, fall of 2021, uh, that means that, that uh, some things need to happen pretty quickly, correct? Yes, so the studies are most of the, the Afghans that came to the United States and they were granted permanent status, their status would expire uh, at the end of uh, sometimes at the end of this year. So for them to become lawful permanent residents to be in the U.S. and to be in the U.S., they have they would have to apply either for a special immigrant visa or they would have to apply for uh, asylums. And besides that, there is the temporary protected status for Afghan, so they can apply for temporary protected status. So that gives them additional eighteen months to live in the U.S. So they would have time to apply for either asylum or SIV to seek lawful permanent residency in the US. And through that temporary protected status, they can also request for an employment authorization. Mm -hmm. that. Could you uh, tell us a little bit about um, sort of the partners in Iowa who are um, helping provide legal services? I, I know that there was a, a recent initiative um, which is is doing precisely that is sort of bringing many uh, immigration attorneys together to support uh, our Afghan neighbors. Uh, do you have more to share about who those partners are? So here in Cedar Rapids, we help Afghan community with the legal status of the immigration matters. Uh, Catholic charities are helping them to seek those legal pathways to be in the U.S. So there won't be a gap between them, uh, between their statuses. And I, I think in Des Moines, Iowa, I mean, yes, helping some of the Afghan uh, population, but I don't know about the other organization that will to provide anything, but here in Cedar Rapids, Catholic Charities has been great and helping Afghans. And most of yeah. the Afghans are aware of that, and they are, they are coming to our office and they are already there with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my understanding is that there has been a new sort of um, uh, a program created with partners at the University of Iowa, at Drake University, uh, and at, at, not, at several nonprofits around the state working together in collaboration. Um, maybe I can find that that link and share it with folks too. Um, yes, I know there's there's real interest, uh, real effort around uh, supporting uh, folks here from Afghanistan. Another uh, question, uh, did the Taliban control all of Afghanistan before the 2001 US invasion? What freedoms did people in the cities have in the year 2000? So um, before 2021 and 2000, yes, Taliban uh, controlled Afghanistan for around five years and it was the first regime of the Taliban at that time. The same as now, People didn't have much freedom at that time as well. And Taliban had their restricted rules at that time as well. And even much restricted rules in 2000s and, and 1999s than even they have now. Um, I, I see a hand up. Abby, do you mind putting your comment in the in the chat? And I'm also going to, I, I uh, referenced um, this, and I was able to find it quickly here, uh, just put it in the chat here, uh, folks can check out this, uh, this new partnership in, in part led by the University of Iowa. Um, yeah, uh, any other questions in the room? Um, uh, Abby, you have, you, you have something to add? Abby from the Catherine McCauley Center? I just wanted to answer um, a couple of questions that um, had been raised about um, the pathway to citizenship for Afghans and then also 
the collaboration with the University of Iowa for That'd be great, Abby. You're, you're a little crackly on your end. It's kind of hard to hear you. Oh, sorry. Hold on just a minute. Sure. Yeah, that'd be great if you could uh, if you could provide more information about that. Can you see better now? Uh, still pretty crackly. How about now? That, okay, let's, yeah, go for it. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, my name is Abby. I work with the Catherine McCauley Center with our Refugee and Immigrant Services Program. And currently there is no pathway to citizenship for most Afghans um, unless they uh, entered it with a special immigrant visa or have been approved for that, um, which means that they can then apply for a green card. And then after uh, the required amount of time, uh, they can apply for citizenship. However, for Afghans who entered with humanitarian parole status, they have to apply for temporary protective status and then apply for asylum. And unless someone gets approved for asylum, they are not eligible to apply for a green card. Um, so if someone does get approved for asylum, then they can apply for a green card one year later. And then five years later, they can apply for citizenship. So it's a very long process. Um, and most Afghans that entered, entered with humanitarian parole status, which means the opportunity to apply for a green card is not available to most Afghans. Um, the other thing I wanted to answer was about the collaboration with the University of Iowa um, for uh, legal assistance. Um, so we will be holding um, a clinic here at CMC later this month. Um, uh, in collaboration with the University of Iowa to help Afghans um, fill out what's called the affidavit of relationship form um, for Afghans who left family back in Afghanistan or um, if their family was able to get out of Afghanistan and um, go to a, a different country. Um, we will be um, providing assistance for Afghans to fill out those forms. Um, those forms are available on the USCIS website, but um, if Afghans need help filling out those forms, um, they can come to that clinic later this month. I'm not sure if um, information about that has been shared yet, so I don't want to give too many details. Um, once everything is confirmed and finalized, then we'll share that information with um, our Afghan clients and community partners that will be working with us. Yeah, thank you very much, Abby. That's great context. I really appreciate you weighing in. Um, Zainab, I, I wonder, it, would you be able to say a few words uh, about how uh, the kids are doing? Um, you talked uh, about school and some of the challenges learning languages, but one of the other things that you noted is that uh, in the last six months, uh, kids have been, uh, Afghan children have been uh, feeling better about how they're doing in school. Uh, will you share a bit more about um, what you what you see with the, the youngest Afghans? Yes, as I said in the beginning, the language is the uh, most barriers and the biggest problem. And uh, like first in school, like my sisters, my siblings, they were sad and they didn't like to go to school because the language is a big problem. And there were different people from different countries. And uh, now in this six months, they can speak really good English and they're happy to going to school. And like when I'm seeing every Thursday night here, like from other Afghan kids, they also can speak uh, English and they're really happy to going to school because now they know with English, a lot of uh, important subject they can, uh, they know like math, other uh, subject and some of them they can speak some of Spanish and uh, like now they don't have this problem, but a lot of our men or women, they have this problem. Language the biggest problem. And another problem, if uh, some can provide the and drive how to drive provide this class and english is a problem just for men or men and women children they don't have this problem now because they serve at school and they have a lot of making friends and learning other subjects and learning english and spanish mm -hmm. mm, that's great yeah um i wonder if you would take us uh for a moment into the you said that the ypn has uh, thursday classes could you explain a little bit more about uh, what happens uh, in those uh, Thursday meetings and what the energy is, is like in the room? I remember when you and I uh, first spoke, 
Uh, you shared such wonderful things about what happens in those spaces. Yes, sure. We have group every Thursday night uh, evening from five to seven. And there's coming a lot of people from uh, like African, uh, African people, Spanish people and Afghan people. And we have different uh, room for them. And like Afghan, there were just Afghan women and from other country we have like uh, African, they're male or women, both they can come. But for Afghan people, they just come children and women and they they bringing their own foods and sharing with each other and we can give them gift cards and we have a um, new like uh, we have give education for like as i said for car safety birth control and a lot of this stuff sub, new subjects and they're making connection like uh, women just stay at home and it is too hard for them just stay at home and like every thursday now they're coming to group, they're so happy, and children also, they're so happy, and they're bringing their own foods, and uh, it's a good, uh, it's good for them because they're making connection and earning education. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. And I don't recall, um, I don't see any other questions, so I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm asking them myself, because uh, I'm very interested. I'm, I'm wondering, I, I don't remember if it was Sadat, you said, or, or Zainab, you, you mentioned something about how um, Afghan men in the community are aspiring to open their own businesses. And uh, I wonder if you might uh, share a bit about what some of the ideas have been, uh, what, what these gentlemen would like to do uh, now that they're here in the United States. What kind of businesses would they like to start? So uh, as I see in the communities, uh, as I said, some, most of them, they have some unique skills. So I, I, I have seen some of the men that they, they are thinking about starting a new a business. Some of them sort of were a good tailor. Some of them were good carpenters. Some of them were, uh, some of them were good uh, mechanics. So most, uh, so some of the community members they are thinking about opening a new business to be their own employers. I would say. That. That's fabulous. I'm sure many of us here would welcome the opportunity to. Uh, to to frequent those businesses, so I, I hope we get to uh, see them open and and come to fruition. Um, uh, fabulous. Uh, yeah, let's see a couple other things here in the chat. Um, okay, we have a uh, looks like uh, mostly a statement uh, from Yerbeng. If people are interested in helping Afghans, some of the major barriers are language and transportation. We haven't talked about transportation yet. True. If people are interested in helping, there are many direct ways you can impact and help your Afghan neighbors. One is helping to cover the cost for Afghans uh, who have to pay a filing fee to the Department of Homeland Security to apply for their employment work uh, permit that will be expiring this fall. A second, if you have time and a car, many Afghan needs Afghans need rides to their appointments in Des Moines uh, to go to US CIS or Omaha, which yeah, even further away. Some things do have to go to Omaha for the immigration cases. Uh, thank you very much for those those specific things. Um, a question, what is the specific location of the Thursday night meetings? Um, that's a great question. Uh, Zaina, up to you. Are, could folks in the community, folks attending in this room now, also come uh, to these Thursday night uh, get-togethers? Mm -hmm. This um, specific place is the Corporate Community College in Cedar Hall, third floor. We have uh, our location is there. And if like uh, someone have a new subject and they can come and teach our Afghan women and they can teach their husband and I will be there for them for translate. And like if one, someone have time and someone have new subject for them to teach them, we will be happy. That's wonderful. So uh, Kirkwood Community College in Cedar Hall uh, mm -hmm. What what time on Thursdays do you all meet? Um, the teaching time is uh, from six to seven, and the food time is from five to six. Oh, wonderful! Food time sounds great. Uh, <laughs> so does so does the learning. Yeah, very good. Uh, okay, and um, maybe uh, Sadat and uh, Zaina, would you be willing to put your uh, emails into the uh, into the chat if folks uh, would like to reach out to you to learn more maybe they can uh, reach out directly sure fabulous okay very good 
Um, thank you so much, uh, Sadat Ahmadi and Zainab Afyan, for your excellent presentation today. This was ICFRC's seventh program uh, for the spring semester. Our next program, next week, Wednesday at 8 o'clock p.m., that's 8 o'clock p.m., in recognition of International Women's Day, features speakers Dr. Vivian Wee and Rosanna Issa. They will speak on Islamic feminism and women's rights. Uh, again, please note the time of this program is 8 p.m., as our speakers will be joining us from Singapore and Malaysia, rather than our usual noon time slot. Uh, thanks for joining us today, and we are adjourned.